everyone. I am Melissa Morrow with Rave Home Staging and Vintage Bee Design. Today we have a fun video for you with Jamie Ray Vintage and the Creative Collab Group. The Creative Collaboration video was supposed to be something that we're passionate about and that kind of speaks to who we are. I decided to go to my staging inventory and take an old footboard that had been turned into a headboard and turn it into basically not a hall tree but a coat rack. So uh Join me as I take you through the process of how I turn a boring footboard into this beauty that is going to accessorize the front entryway of my new home. We have a whole section in our warehouse of painted headboards and some of them are in not great shape and need to be repainted. I thought I would choose from these so you can kind of see the variety and this is the one I decided on. I really liked the size of it. I love the curves. I like the little legs. And so all I needed to do was get the two by four that had been used to raise it up off. So I thought I would do this coat rack for my new house and it has some of my favorite things. It has my most favorite chippy milk paint. I'm sure you've heard me say before that Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint is one of my most favorite paints. So I decided to use French Enamel and Flow Blue. I think they're going to match the colors in my house really nicely. Mixing milk paint is really easy so don't let it intimidate you. It is simply one part powder to one part water. Using hot water helps but it's not required. So after I mixed it up I just let it sit for a few minutes. We are moving into a new home. Hopefully by the time this video airs, I actually will be living in the new house. Now I am gonna use the new Zipra brushes that we've gotten. I really do like the consistency here and normally I use the Klingon, but I do wanna give these Zipras a shot. I used them actually to paint quite a bit in my home and found they are really nice brushes. They are super soft and they do a great job of holding a lot of paint despite their size and I'm going to use them in sort of a blending effect. This is going to be a very basic blend. Um, really, it's, it's barely a blend. It's just sort of a mash together of the two colors so that they feed into one another. As with most paints, you'll want to apply two good coats of Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint, and you can see the color is really luscious, and it's got a good consistency. The thicker your coats, the more likely you are to have chipping and cracking. A heat gun is also a great tool to force cracks and chips. I get a lot of comments about the fact that I mix and match products all the time. I am not a paint loyalist to any particular brand. I find products that I love and I gravitate towards them. I did some stenciling. For this piece, I'm using Dixie Belle's Royal Damask stencil. It has a really nice thickness and the key to getting a beautiful um, sort of stencil that looks timeless and worn and not freshly painted is to use a good soft stencil brush and then put minimal paint on your brush, getting most of it off and then going in a swirling pattern, making sure that you're coating heavier in some areas than in others. And one of my favorite things about the stencil is it's actually repeating. So all you have to do is line it up and stencil the next section. Now I am somebody that if I love like one thing, like a mold, then I might go in and buy a whole bunch of them. But I am not specific to any particular brand. I find that virtually all brands have something valuable about them that makes them unique and it makes me want to use them for a specific product. Now that I finished the stenciling, it is time to go in and do a little bit of the distressing. This is where I am gonna take any pieces that are super chippy and go ahead and knock them off. This is not about high pressure distressing. This is just about taking what's loose and getting it off the piece and softening up the harsher lines of my stencil. I want this piece to look really old. I don't want it to look freshly painted. I want it to look like it's been sitting around for years and I have somehow reclaimed it. We have a bunch of different type paints. And what's fun about that for me is when customers come into our store is we're really able to sort of dial in rather than trying to make whatever brand we have work for them. We can start off with the basic question of, you know, what are you working on? What is it that you want to achieve with the paint you have? What's its purpose? How's it going to be used? Things like that. So I find that 
different brands do different things and I love having the variety at my fingertips. So here's where I might make an, made a mistake with this piece um, and you can seal over milk paint with either using a hemp oil, a wax, or a top coat and I opted to go for a top coat. The problem here is that I had forgotten that the original paint job on this footboard was also Miss Mustard Seed and by adding the extra moisture to my paint and then having it shrink up again it really got chippy, super, super chippy. This likely would not have chipped this badly if I had used either wax or hemp oil, especially if I'd used more of a wax, but I did. And so now it's time to decide what I wanna do. I've already stenciled it, otherwise I could go ahead and put some bonding agent in some milk paint and paint over it, sand it down, do the bonding agent, paint over it and I could have it full coverage. Instead, I love chippy and I love old, so I'm gonna work with it. I know this is a Jamie Ray Vintage collaboration and because of that, you've probably started off on Jamie Ray Vintage's channel and that's great. And you're already familiar with DIY products and IOD, which is one of the reasons why today I chose to premiere some products and use products in this collaboration that maybe you're less familiar with. Some transfers, and if you get real close, you can even see that I got a little bit of dirty vintage going on a little grunge. So we have Hocus Pocus transfers. We have Miss Mustard Seed, which is similar to her Sweet Pickens milk paint. With this Hocus Pocus transfer, I actually had three beautiful sheets to choose from. I chose this one primarily because it had the writing over where the biggest chips were. Just like IOD and Prima transfers, all you need to do is use the enclosed stick to rub the transfer down onto your piece. Now, because my piece is so chippy, it is a little trickier. Okay, I've got to do a little surgery here. Um, because my board is so chippy. Let's see what I'm here. Um, and areas where it was super, super chippy it has started lifting the transfers, actually. The paint is sticking to the transfer instead of the transfer sticking to the paint. Okay, so here I'm going to, I'm just going to try to get this on video, but I'm going to very delicately, I'm just going to stick, I'm going to kind of roll this down, but I'm going to use my stick and kind of roll this off and you can see it's kind of holding it i'm trying to roll that right off and it lifted a little it's really loose stay and i'm just trying to basically pull this up and leave most of the paint down but not stuck to the plastic and most of this has been a piece of cake there were just a couple of little spots. Now that I've got the backing up, I've got some top coat in a bowl, and I'm just gonna kind of glue, use the top coat like glue, these pieces back into place. And you can see here that this piece is lifting also, and it came off the backing, but you can see it's pulling up. So I'm just gonna give it Trying to kind of shove some under there too, so that you know, basically, if you're gluing something, you want it under the piece, not just over it, right? So, think of it almost like a I'm almost decoupaging these little flecks back on. If I can shove some under there, that's all the better. And just with my finger, not a brush, because a brush might wipe it away. I have a lot more control with my fingertips in places like here where it's lifting. Um, I'm actually, I've actually already kind of glued this in once and the thing is is that the liquid of the top coat is actually kind of making it bubble a little bit more. It's creating more of a pull so it's lifting it. So I don't care about this being chippy. I love chippy and if you add enough top coat, believe it or not, and I'm using a flat, I'm using the Dixie Belle flat top coat. If you add enough top coat, even when it's chippy like this, basically you'll sort of make it stick there so that even if it's bubbly the, the what's lifted will be hard and it won't be able to pull up 
When working with any transfer, simply use the stick to rub down over the pattern and you'll see that it turns hazy. When it turns hazy, that's how you know that it's actually sticking to the piece that you're putting it on versus still being stuck to that plastic. And you just sort of continue this process until all of it is off. If you lift it up and you see that um, some of it has stuck to your plastic, simply lay it back down and you'll be able to rub some more, um, except for, you know, in those places where I had some little tricky bits and uh, I did just show you how to resolve those. And no matter how many times you do this, the reveal is always exciting to see. Uh, it's just amazing to me how such a small thing can create such high impact. Now, by now you would think I would have learned to stop adding liquid to this. I should be waxing right now, but no, I went ahead and did the top coat because you do need to seal over the transfers. So you can expect more chippiness in the final reveal. Did anybody else catch what other favorite thing of mine? is on that headboard that I didn't bring up. Um, if you know, or you think you know, drop it in the comments. I would love to see your guesses. To calculate where I need my holes to go for my knobs, which is what I'll be hanging off of, I need to first figure out how long my board is, which in this case, it's just slightly longer than 36 inches, in which case 18 is roughly my middle. So I'm gonna make a mark you're about an inch above the bottom at about 18 inches. And then the next thing I need to do is figure out how far from the edge that I want my first knob to be. In this case, I'm gonna call it at about two inches. Now, I'll actually measure each one of these up so they're, they're in the same height as we go along. So now I know that between two inches and 18 inches, is a difference of 16 inches and I'm going to put one knob in between the two and it's a halfway point and so that's going to give me eight. So really I'm looking at the distance between two inches and 18 inches of the center and the first knob and going halfway at eight inches. And that means that I need to go eight inches, two inches from the other side, and then halfway between those, which will again be at the eight inch point um, to get all of my knobs. I'm gonna use a pilot screw to make the first screws from the front, and then I'm gonna use a slightly larger bit in order to expand that so that the screw that'll actually hold the piece in will go up. And the first pi uh, pilot hole is always from the front. That way, if there's any major chip out, it's on the back side where you won't see it. I realized I really wanted a piece of scrap wood under so when I drill through, I don't hit my table. And here I'm just adding some wooden French cleats. This will give me a lot of weight ability to hang off the wall um, and make sure it doesn't come off the wall. It's much sturdier than using D-rings. You do need to make sure that that piece of wood on the back, however, and the one on your wall are both level. Now I finally get to add all of my little knobs and this is where I should be done, except for it seems like I'm never really done with a project. Uh, I was still feeling like it was missing just a little something. I decided everything was still looking way too clean for me and so it was time to go in and start adding some waxes. I started off with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in the color white. Um, really any white wax would do, but this is what I had open and on hand. What I love about this is it gets into all the little nooks and crannies so that you can really see all of the cracking. Next, I'll go in with some Easy Peasy Spray Wax. I love this stuff. It makes waxing with the dirt and the dust so easy. And then I'm going in with some Dixie Dirt and the color Ash. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit grungy. And again, I don't like the new look, so I'm gonna make sure it looks old, 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 getting it into all the nooks and crannies. Depending on just how dirty you want your piece to be, you can either put the Dixie Dust in a cup and use your brush to brush it in, or you can sprinkle it on top and rub it in. The more you sprinkle, the more likely you are to have a little bit cakier, dirtier dust, which is exactly what I was going for. Hopefully you can see in these up close views that the combination of the white wax and the dust really creates a beautiful effect of having it age over time and keeping that vintage chippiness in really added a lot of dimension and texture.
I would love to hear what your favorite products that you saw in today's video are. Are there any other products on the market that you would like us to showcase for you that you'd like to see us use on a project so maybe you could learn more about it? I would love to have that information. So drop a link. And thank you so much for joining us in today's video. Please be sure to hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications on when we post. this editing thing I this group la, 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 la. Uh, I promise I'm doing my best and we will get better over time so stick with me subscribe and uh, we'll see you soon bye